China's real estate market has been very inflated the past several years. It's said that the real estate in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou City could buy the entire U.S. But China's largest real estate group, Evergrande, has been struggling with a financial crisis. On September 25th, Taishin News reported on a letter sent by Evergrande to the Guangdong government warning of a potential cash crunch if it could not carry out a debt restructuring and backdoor listing by January, resulting in a dramatic sell-off in its stocks and bonds. In the letter, Evergrande said it had an interest-bearing debt balance of 119 billion USD as of June 30th, 2020, and for your information, Microsoft's total assets in 2019 are only 286 billion USD. To avoid liquidation, Evergrande must repay 19 billion USD of debt and pay 2 billion USD of interest by the end of January 2021. Their debt ratio will rise to more than 90%, which may break the cash flow of Evergrande. It's not just Evergrande that has such huge debts. There are 15 Chinese property developers with debt ratios of more than 80% in 2019, and other companies that have acquired large amounts of assets overseas, such as HNA and Fosun, with extreme debt ratios. On September 14th, Anbang Insurance, with assets of more than 286 billion US, announced that it was preparing to liquidate the company. To allow companies like these to continue to borrow and create an even bigger economic bubble, or to restrict them for doing so and create an immediate crisis is a question for Beijing, and it chose the third way, mobilizing overseas funds into China. A number of tycoons close to Beijing defied the Standard & Poor's warning by buying shares in Evergrande on the 27th, sending its shares rebounding. They include Chinese and Hong Kong companies such as Fair Eagle Securities, Asia Standard International Group Limited, and CST Group. In addition, international investment banks such as Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, CLSA, and DBS also backed Evergrande, saying the market had overreacted to the rumors and that they expected Evergrande to reduce its debt more than expected. But if you look closer at these banks, you will find that the biggest shareholder of Deutsche Bank is China's H&A Group. JP Morgan Chase has huge investments in China and is also the joint manager of Chinese government bonds. DBS has a large business in China and CLSA is the largest investment bank in China. Who are they responsible for when they put investors' money into Evergrande? Evergrande denied almost immediately after the report was published, saying the letter was fabricated, but it was not able to stop the international rating agency Standard & Poor's from downgrading its outlook to negative. This is not just a piece of everyday financial news. Evergrande is China's largest real estate developer with assets of over 320 billion USD in 2019. Its founder and chairman of the board, Hu Kaiyan, was ranked 10th on the 2016 Who Run 100 Richest List and is a member of the Chinese Communist Party's Political Consultative Conference, China's top political advisory body, and is secretary of the company's CCP Party Branch Committee. Evergrande is a typical Chinese, so-called private enterprise, which is actually managed by people with a Communist Party background, operates according to the party's political direction, and often wins, unfairly, in the business competition, beating out other small private enterprises. In other words, Evergrande is a state-backed company, but is now in crisis. Straight Times reported on September 28th that many private bankers told their wealthy clients not to worry. However, it's not the case. The Chinese Communist Party has known about China's real estate debt crisis for a long time and has prevented real estate groups from listing in A shares, which means the domestic shares of China, in the past few years, leaving real estate groups such as Evergrande to borrow money from banks or strategic investors who demand high interest returns. Real estate in China is heavily dependent on financing, but just over a month ago, Beijing proposed an additional three red lines approach to restricting heavily indebted enterprises from borrowing. Evergrande has solidly crossed that threshold and could borrow no more. In fact, while overseas, investors are being kept in the dark. Analysis of Evergrande's broken chain of funds has flooded the Chinese network. If Evergrande collapses, what will happen? 
As of June 30th this year, Evergrande Group has 792 projects covering 229 cities with 140,000 employees and 3.17 million people employed in the upstream and downstream sectors. In the event that Evergreen defaults on its debts, it will bring down a large number of banks and enterprises to default on their debts too, which will trigger immediate protest and social instability. As for the crisis caused by Evergrande's failure to repay its debts, China's official media, Financial Micro Angle, said Evergrande's stock price fluctuations were because of a conspiracy by foreign forces. This has also led to a backlash from the Chinese people, who criticized the government for only shirking its responsibilities. In fact, China's real estate market bubble has grown significantly since 2000, with average home prices tripling between 2005 and 2009. After the financial crisis in 2008, the Chinese government launched an economic stimulus package. In order to meet the central government's GDP and other economic targets, local governments excessively promoted infrastructure and real estate, resulting in overbuilding and deficits in many places, which has led to extreme local debt that has persisted to this day. Chinese scholars estimate that there were 80 million vacant properties in China in 2011 and 34 million vacant properties nationwide by 2020, but housing prices are still rising abnormally. Now in China, even tenants could be victimized by China's real estate market. In September, a number of Chinese long-term rental platform companies ran away with their money and the media exposed their dangerous operations. They committed landlords to chartering then acted as intermediaries to find tenants, snatching up customers at below market rents, asking the tenants to pay their long-term rent one-off, then the company put the money right into high-risk investments. This approach quickly generates a capital pool of hundreds of millions of dollars at zero cost to these companies. However, landlords and tenants were unknowingly put into a financial gamble, and if they win, the proceeds go to the companies. If they lose, landlords and tenants suffer the losses. This reflects the chaos of the unregulated market in China. In addition, China has been printing a lot of money for years in order to boost its economic figures, which has led to high inflation for more than 10 years now. Meanwhile, traditional bank deposits have been replaced by risky financial investments, coupled with the appreciation of the RMB and deterioration of the investment environment, most of the capital flushed into property speculation and the stock market. China is brewing a crisis, worse than the 2008 Lehman subprime mortgage crisis. Among Evergrande's 320 billion USD assets, 170 billion are inventory and 120 billion are liabilities. It is an actual representation of the Chinese economic bubble, but it doesn't seem to bother Evergrande, which announced earlier that it was entering the electric vehicle industry. Although none of the vehicles have been made yet, Evergrande has already received approval from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange on the 25th of September and is preparing to list its shares in Hong Kong with an estimated stock issue of 1.55 billion yuan, equivalent to 214 million US dollars. The company still looks very confident, and there's no telling how many more people will fall into this Evergrande financial maze. Many have said that a company like Evergrande can't exist in an open and free market, or at least that a company with such heavy debts would have gone bankrupt and investors wouldn't trust it anymore. China's market system is closed and not free. It appears to be highly profitable, but it comes with huge risks. Now the system is not only harming the interests of the Chinese people, but also eroding the international market which has to be stopped now.